gentleman in the red, his name is Zion Lex. And uh, I guess broadly speaking, he subscribes to... He's a Tanakh-only Hebrew. Tanakh-only Hebrew Israelite. Uh, he, he's of that community. And then on the uh, right-hand side, you have uh, Professor James Smalls, who's over there in the blue. Now, James, Professor James Smalls would be... Kind of, you know, I mean, definitely consider one of the OGs, you know, of the uh, specifically of the comedic tradition. Yeah. And he also deals with, um, you know, West African religions. And, and I guess he probably would say just uh, kind of African religions uh, or in spiritual general, yeah. systems mm -hmm. in general. I mean, so that's kind of who we're dealing with here. It secures who we are as a people. And more importantly, it also secure, secures our uh, spiritual beliefs. So. In the community right now, we have our good brother Jabari, who is arguing on behalf of the idea that Christianity represents stolen goods, essentially, or intellectual property, which was taken out of Kemet and not properly attributed. And uh, as I've stated, I agree, and clearly you agree. Now, the position that our other good brother, um, brother Garfield, has taken is that he doesn't believe that Christianity um, has a comedic uh, fingerprint or stamp. And he says that in order to do so, there's a whole order of operation that everyone is not looking at. So I want to first kind of present his argument and then ask you to kind of weigh in from an elder's perspective and elder in knowledge first. So here's what I want to say. So Garfield says, in order to prove that Christianity comes from Kemet, the first thing we have to do is to be able to ascertain whether or not the people who are framing Christianity can read the language of Kemet, which he's also going to use in the debate to say, since Brother Jabari doesn't read the Metonetta, he cannot come to these conclusions. So that's the first thing I would like you to weigh on. Is it necessary for those who are creating Christianity based on Kemetic spirituality to know the language? To some degree. <laughs> The people who are creating Christianity is not the Romans. Okay. They're under the Roman domination. Okay. The people who created Christianity is Kemetic people. That's right. All right. These are the priests who live in Kemet. Mm -hmm. These are the pe people who live in what we call the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that Constantine bring to the Nicene Conference. And remember, they don't Stop. do one conference. Stop. One Stop. I knew you was gonna get him on that, but uh, go ahead, rock out. What you what you got, bro? And again, much respect to the elder, right? This is this is not an attack, you know. Um, so he's making the point that there were comedic priests at the Council of Nicaea. Now, for me, that that's breaking news because I've never no 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 disrespect. I just never right. heard that before. Yeah, you yeah. know. And but the thing is, we know actually who was at the council like it was recorded people were there and they took notes while the council was taking place mm -hmm. this is from the 2000 years of coptic christianity it says here eusebius of caesarea the author of ecclesi wow ecclesi ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical history ecclesiastical, yeah. mm -hmm. in the fourth century states that saint mark came to egypt in the first or third year of the reign of Emperor Claudius, AD 41-43, right? Well, you know what? I don't think this is the slide I wanted. Hold up. Okay. This ain't the slide. Hold up, hold up. Here we go. This is from Theodoret of Cyrus, the classical history of Theodoret. It says here, Constantine had invited all 1,800 bishops of the Christian church within the Roman Empire, about 1,000 in the east and 800 in the west. But a smaller, unknown number attended. Eusebius of Caesarea counted more than 250. Athanasius of Alexandria counted 318. And Eutychius of Antioch estimated about 270. All three were present at the council. Later, Socrates Solaticus recorded more than 300. And Eva Garius, Hilary of Potiers, Jerome, and Dionysus Edgius. Man, these guys have some names. Yeah, and yeah. Rufinius recorded 318. This number, 318, is preserved in the liturgies of the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria. Right? So we have all these eyewitness accounts. And yeah, the, the body count varies, you know, but not by much. But the thing is, people were there, 
and they were counting heads. Right. So I think if there was a contingent of comedic priests, they would have been mentioned in these various lists. Obviously, man, you, we know that there's a billion and one theories about you know what did or didn't happen at the Council of Nicaea. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and people just make these claims, but the first question we want to ask is where are your sources? Right. Where are where where can I find what you're saying? In you know uh, you know sourced out. You know you, you got to give me some primary source, secondary source, any something. You know what I'm saying? You know to substantiate your claim. That's that's just history in general, particularly ancient history. Particularly ancient history, we need to be asking folks for primary sources. Now with with the Council of Nicaea, there they, this really doesn't have to be any mystery about what happened at the Council of Nicaea. You know what I'm saying like believe it or not, historians have a pretty good idea. I mean, they, they, right. they're very confident right. about what happened because there's loads of sources right now. You know what I'm saying we can list out Eusebius. You know what I'm saying and hopefully people will go back, you know, later on, and, and and I'm just basically providing a list, and you can go look it up. I'm saying, but these are these are the sources. You know, what I'm saying of inform this this is where scholars look to glean what happened at the Council of Nicaea. They have the works of the Lyce uh, of Eusebius, where you have the life of Constantine, the Epistle of Eusebius. Uh, Athanasius, uh, you know, he has letters where he's writing about the Council of Nicaea. You uh, state, yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. That looks like you, <laughs> but you know, but as you mentioned, Socrates, Scholasticus, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me go to the next slide. Um, Theodoret, you just mentioned him a second ago. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's right. got he's got the uh, um, you know works where he's talking about what happened at the Council of Nicaea, Rufinus, so me. I'm not going to try that one either. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, Phil, uh, Philos, Degrius. I'm saying like these are all sources that we have extant works right now. I'm saying as a matter of fact, I have them right now in my hand. Uh -oh. <laughs> like, uh -oh. like, like this, this is it. But you, you can actually buy this on Amazon. I'm saying as a matter of fact, and, and as soon as I finish talking, I'm going to put the link to it in the chat. Now, granted, it costs you a pretty penny, but you can you can buy all the Nicene and post Nicene fathers. This right here, this is Socrates, Sozomenus. I'm saying that's this, this, this it, that's what this is right here. I also have. Um, Eusebius, I got the works of Eusebius right here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as a matter of fact, before I get up out of here, I got some links where I mean, now this is going to cost you a couple hundred bucks, you know, this whole set. But I got some links where you can get like get it online for free. You, know, you can get some of the, at least some of these works for free. So you got Eusebius right here. You know what I'm saying? You've got um, the Theodore. You know what I'm saying? I got him right here. You know what I mean? Like this. I mean, dog, this, this is wait, we have this information. There's no mystery about this stuff. Right here, and I'm gonna read that when we get to a little bit later on. We're talking about what happened to the council, and I say I'm actually gonna read a portion from this. This is this is all the works of Athanasius right here. Mm. This is all the works of Athanasius in my hand right now. So if I want to know what happened at the council, and I see it, I don't have to. It doesn't have. It doesn't have to be a mystery. I'm saying you can Google it. I'm saying you can look for sources online, or you can actually just buy. It. You can have it in your hands like I do right now, and you can go to sources, which I will in a minute. And saying that gives you an understanding of what took place at the Council of Nicaea. So right. when people like, with all due respect, people like Professor Smalls, you know, when they're making claims like, you know, there were these comedic priests of the Council of Nicaea, then what I want to see is that they go to sources like these, right. and I want to give, I want them to give me paragraph, page number, and so forth, where they can show me, okay, cool, here's where the it mentions that this such and such comedic priest or these comedic priests right. then at the council of Nicaea or whatever other people want to say. When people want to talk about, oh, the Bible was created at the council of Nicaea, they cre created Jesus at the council of Nicaea, whatever, you, whatever claim you want to make, go to the sources right. and show me. It's, it's not hard. It's not hard. Right. You know what I'm saying? We need to really start pushing back on these folks. You know what I'm saying? So I was looking for anything that was even close to a reference to what the elder said in the video and so you know i scoured the interwebs like i do okay right? Right. and i found something now i'm not saying that this is where he got his information from but this is the closest i can get that kind of goes and corroborates what he was trying to say so i need you to stop sharing okay the screen all right let me get there boom all right cool so again, I'm not saying he got it from here, but this is the only thing I found. All right. So, okay. Uh -huh. All right. It's a book. 
entitled Jesus Pimped Sarabas Sermon on the Black Christ no by M.C. L. Lee Jest. <laughs> okay? I'm, I did not make this up. This is, is it, an actual book. Is that M.C. Illegitimate? Is that what it says? Is that what it says? Illegest, illegest, and the illegitimate sources is that what it is? That what it is? <laughs> <laughs> and this is from page 15. So he said, He says, Aristotle was repaid by receiving the priceless books of the temples of Kemet when Alexandria, Alexandria invaded Egypt. Truth goddess would never accept a mortal as God, however, corrupt comedic priests accommodated the invaders himself, Pharaoh, and God Serapis, Osiris. Apis with an image of a bearded Babylonian God that eerily becomes the face of Jesus presented at the Council of Nicaea. Oh my God. So as you there's no footnotes. Of course. There's no bibliography. Of course. It's just a stream of strange statements right. cobbled together. So this is the closest I have found as a source that has something to do with some kind of Secret cabal of comedic priests <laughs> and Grecian Roman rulership. You know what I mean? So right, 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 right. Th that's all I found. So, so that's that's what, that kind of kills that. that now, now, I do want to get back to. <laughs> I mean, MC illegitimate, <laughs> illegitimate sources. You know what I'm <laughs> but 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 so my thing is now the question that was asked to uh, your Professor Spall before he kind of launches into that. Um, you know, he's dealing with, and I actually I can stop sharing that because I'm gonna come back to right. clicking on the wrong thing. Um, come back to that later. You know, people can go ahead and check that out. Um, oh, okay. Actually, I do want to get to this point. You know what I'm saying? So they're, they're asking the question about, you know, basically how did Christianity come about? You know, was it stolen from Kemet? You know, and so, uh, you know, Dr. Small is making his claims that it came about, you know, due to the Kemetic priests and, and, and from Egypt. And again, you, you want to ask about primary sources, right? Right. Now, here we have Tacitus, who is among the most respected, if not the most respected Roman historians coming out of the first, second, third century, right? Um, he's right, his, he writes one of his works uh, entitled Annals in uh, one, about 116 AD, and he actually talks about Christ in the beginning of you know, the Christian movement. He tells us you know, what's been reported to him and when he talks about, I'm not going to read the whole quote, you know what I'm saying? But he talks about how, actually, I'll go ahead and read por a, a part of it. Um, you know, actually, I, I'll, just, I'll just read it. It says, so Christus, you know, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty, referring to the crucifixion. You, people can look up the context of how that term extreme penalty is used. Uh, during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate. So, we, so already we got Christ mentioned and Pontius Pilate mentioned. Again, this is this is written in 116 AD. Just you know, just just to point that out, and a most cheap and a most mischievous superstition, thus checked for the moment, again broke out, not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become popular. Accordingly, an arrest was made first of all who pleaded guilty, and then upon their information. An immense multitude was convicted, not so much of the crime of uh, firing the city as of hatred against mankind. All right. So that's that's Tacitus writing in 116 A.D. And he's referring to Nero, who burned down the city in 64 A.D. That's the incident that he's describing. And Nero ends up blaming the Christians. Right. That's what he, that's what Tacitus is talking about. Now, my whole point is uh, Professor Small is saying that, OK, well, you've got these comedic priests who you know, basically frame Christianity and immediately he jumps to the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. But obviously we already have a Christian movement, you know, that Tacitus describes, I'm saying that comes out of Judea and he's right. describing events that took place in 64 AD. You know what I'm saying? So your boy, you know, uh, Professor Smalls is clearly about 300 years late in terms right. of his assessment, right. in terms of how Christianity began, right? Absolutely. So that's one thing. You know, with that being said, I'm, I can uh, take this off for now. With that being said, you know, to uh, Zion Lex's question, uh, Brother Garfield, it, it, which was supposed to be, I like guess it will be the upcoming debate, is uh, putting forth his theory as to how Christianity came about. And one of the things that he claims is um, that Jabari is mistaken um, that Christianity comes out of Kemet because, you know, those who framed Christianity, the, the original Christians, basically, they didn't know um, 
the what they call it, the Medu Netra, which is you know the language of you know the ancient Egyptians. You know I'm saying now, granted, there's different dialects in in ancient Egypt, so we need to be clear about that. You know I'm saying, but most times they don't mention like the Demotic or the Coptic. But let's just talk about the the hier what we might call hieroglyphs. Well, the Coptic comes much later. Absolutely you know I mean? right. You know I'm saying. So so you know these are different phases but you know we'll go over there i'll go back to that in a minute but so the thing is when it comes to um you know garfield's assessment that they would need to know um the medu nature in order to glean from you know the story of horus and osiris and all these kind of things in order to even supposedly as jabari and people like um what's his name uh professor small suggests you know graph that into christianity i mean they didn't you know according to garfield they wouldn't have known the language now the reality is they probably didn't. I, I I don't know these dudes. I can't say for certain that they didn't speak some, you know, uh, some of it or, or whatever. I'm saying, but in all likelihood, they probably didn't. I'm saying, in all likelihood, particularly the, the original disciples, they were probably illiterate because most folks were. I'm saying, and later on, other disciples would have come along, written down their accounts, and so on and so forth. But I think you know Garfield. I, although I mean, I wouldn't imagine he would put all of his his eggs in that one basket of an argument. I think that he does have a point that could you know, be um, in a broader scheme, you know what I'm saying, uh, go towards this point that it's just not likely that these dudes are borrowing from Kemet. It's just, I mean, it's, it's very unlikely. Right. I don't know.